My beloved brothers and sisters, this is a Friday. The prayer that we are about to fulfill is known as Salatul Jumu'ah. The day that we entered this morning, or to be more precise, last night at Salatul Maghrib, as the sun set, is known as Laylatul Jumu'ah, and the day is Jumu'ah. The Friday is the most blessed day created by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is important for us to realize that Adam, may peace be upon him, the first of our species was created on a Friday. And it is important to realize that Allah Almighty has asked us as Muslims, as believers, at a certain time on a Friday, to leave whatever we're doing and to go and listen to what is being said. The Quran uses the term dhikr. Dhikr is normally translated as the remembrance of Allah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu idha nudiya lis-salati min yawmil jumu'ah fas'aw ila dhikrillahi wa dharul bay'. Allah says, "O oh, you who believe, when the caller calls for the prayer on a Friday, then make haste towards the dhikr of Allah and leave your dealings." From this we learn it is compulsory for us as believers to make an effort to attend the Friday prayers. Primarily, the object or the objective is for us to get a dose of a reminder to turn to Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not used to give long, long khutb or lectures on a Friday. In fact, he used to encourage short khutbah and a slightly lengthened prayer. Inna tula salati rajuli wa qisara khutbatihi ma innatum min fiqhi. According to a narration, he says, when the Imam lengthens the Salah a little bit and shortens the reminder, which is the khutbah, the lecture, a little bit, it's a sign of his level of understanding, subhanallah. Because people don't need a long drawn reminder. You're going to be here, inshallah, every week. We remind each other of what? What's the most important thing I could remind you of? Taqwallahi. The remembrance, the consciousness of Allah, the fear of Allah, according to some translations, or the development of the correct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing where you came from, knowing where you are, knowing where you are heading, increasing in your ibadah, in your acts of worship, in a way that every day as you grow older, you are becoming a better person, you are not sliding into becoming a worse person. Your connection with Allah needs to be better. Your ibadah needs to improve and increase anyone material living, which is your business, your shops, your money, your wages, your salaries, your income. Anyone on earth would want an increase in that. But life is temporary. A man is about to die. He doesn't know. He's at work fighting for an increment. He wants a new job that pays better. Is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's okay. May Allah grant us goodness in our sustenance. Amen. But my brothers and sisters, for the business that will get you to the eternal life and its success. Do we love the increment? Are we applying for a new job? I'm going to now fulfill my salah a little bit better. I'm going to do uh, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la two more times in sujood. From three, I'll increase it to five. That's called an increment, mashallah. Do we think that that's going to help us? Many of us are not conscious of that. This is what we mean when we say an improvement in, an improvement in our relationship with Allah. Salatul Jumu'ah, did you know, mashallah, today this Masjid, Masjid Tawheed in East Ham is relatively full so early. I was expecting it to fill up a little bit later. But I want to tell you something very beautiful. Did you know, every Friday, there is a competition. What is the competition? Did you know, the angels come to the door of the Masjid and they write down who entered first with the intention of Jumu'ah and who entered second, and who entered third, and who entered fourth, and who entered fifth, and the list goes on. إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْجُمُعَةِ وَقَفَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ عَلَى بَابِ الْمَسْجِدِ يَكْتُبُونَ الْأَوَّلَ فَالْأَوَّلْ فَإِذَا خَرَجَ الْإِمَامُ طَوَوْ صُحُفَهُمْ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الذِّكِرِ On a Friday, the angels are at the doors of the houses of Allah, writing who came first, who came second. When the Imam begins his khutbah, they close the book and they also want to listen to what is being said. Imagine. So, you come after the Imam starts his khutbah, your Jum'ah is done, inshallah. But you didn't make it to the book of those who won. We're not saying your Jum'ah is not done, it's done, inshallah. May Allah make it easy. But 
is this not an encouragement? Is this not an encouragement to say, make it in a little bit early. One time in my life I can be here first. Khalas. One time at least in my life. Khalas, I'm here first. As you enter, Allahumma aftahli abwaab rahmatik, you look inside, you see, I'm the only guy here. Allahu Akbar, you want today. Another narration of Jumu'ah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, marraha fi sa'at al A person who makes it in the first timing. The first time means as early as possible. The first hour is used, but it's referred to the time. The earliest is as though, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَرَّبَ بَدَنَا It is as though he has sacrificed a camel for the sake of Allah. You came early for Jumu'ah. This is not first. It's a whole group of people who came in that particular hour. So this is the second category of the, of the gift of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ says, it's as though you have sacrificed a camel for the sake of Allah. Can't you sacrifice a camel every Jumu'ah by coming in the first hour way before the Adhan and you, you came inside? And you sat and you did your tilawa, your recitation of the Quran, your dhikr, your ibadah, and you increased your knowledge, you read some beneficial kitab or book, you might have participated in some beneficial lesson if there was. Can we not do that? Well, some people might be busy because honestly, they would be busy due to work, due to various other commitments. It's okay. But once in your life, twice in your life, a few times in your life, or even if you are conscious of what I've just said now, you'll make it at some point. Then the one who makes it a little bit later is as though he has sacrificed a smaller animal and a smaller animal and a smaller animal until the Jumu'ah starts and there's no more sacrifices. My beloved, beautiful brethren in faith, a person who is connected to the houses of Allah has good news. How much importance do you give the house of Allah? Your heart, does it feel happy when it sees a masjid? You're driving in an area and you see a beautiful masjid. How happy do you become? If you do, you're connected to Allah because it's his house. It's the house of Allah. You pass in the area. I see one masjid. A mile later, I see another one. Another mile later, I see a third one. Half a mile later, I see a fourth one. I'm excited. MashaAllah. Subhanallah. I'm so happy. I'm so excited. Now, stop just seeing it. Go in one of them. Subhanallah. Go in. Sit down. Do some salah. Ask Allah's goodness. It's a Friday. I want to tell you something else about this beautiful Friday. Do you know on a Friday, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says there is a certain time wherein which any supplication that is made is responded to by Allah. Any dua you want to make is accepted. It's called Sa'atul Istijaba, the time of answering a dua. Can I tell you what works? Every little while from the morning, you keep repeating the dua. I think you will get to by the evening some moment that was the moment of acceptance. But there's a condition. You must ask halal things. You must ask good things. You must ask pure things. You must ask beneficial things. You can't ask qati'atu rahim to break a relation. You don't ask that from Allah. You don't ask that which is in the displeasure of Allah. You ask Allah and you have conviction that Allah will give me. When the time is right, it's done. So it's called sa'atul istijaba. Some of the scholars say it is between Asr and Maghrib just before the sun sets. It's one opinion. It's a good opinion. You find a lot of people sitting after Salatul Asr on a Friday, supplicating, calling out to Allah, remembering Allah. Subhanallah, Allah gave us a beautiful day. Khayru yawmin tala'at fihi shamsu, yawmul jumu'ati. The best day in which the sun has ever risen is a Friday. Now, imagine if that Friday happens to have some other virtue with it. What would be its value? What do I mean? We just said Friday is the best day of the week. What if that Friday is in the best month of the year? Which is the best month of the year? Ramadan. It's around the corner. So if you have a Friday and it is in Ramadan, you are having a double dose of brilliance and goodness. Allah is giving you a bigger opportunity. What do I want from a Friday? I tell you what I want. I want forgiveness from Allah. I want acceptance and the mercy of Allah. That's what I want. If you leave Salah on a Friday, you leave almost sin free. Your minor sins are forgiven without you even asking for it because of the good deed. Your good deeds automatically wipe out the minor sins that you've done. The major sins require tawbah. And that's why one Friday to another Friday will automatically wipe out the sins that were committed before between the two for as long as we're talking of minor sins. Things you may not have realized. Your eyes wandered a little bit. You might have said a word or two this way, that way. These are minor sins. 
Allah will forgive them because you followed them up with a lot of good deeds. And then there is a month of forgiveness in which you are going to get a multiplied reward and greater mercy of Allah. It's a day of mercy and it's a month of mercy. That day is in it. Subhanallah. On top of that, you are fasting. How many pillars of Islam are being fulfilled at the time? Listen to this. Your kalima, your shahada, you repeat it and you should be repeating it on a daily basis, morning, afternoon, evening and night. Please get into the habit to repeat your shahada every day as an ibadah and as a remembrance of Allah. When you make wudu, it is sunnah to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu or wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So get into the habit of repeating your shahada. If you die today and you've said your shahada three, four times during the day, even if it wasn't the last words before you died, may Allah make that happen. But if it wasn't that, at least you said it in the day. The angels have written, this man died today. Early in the morning, he said this five times that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Do you think that you are going to really not achieve the mercy of Allah? And you said the shahada, you read Quran in the morning. I tell people, start off with one verse. You cannot deny that. We're sitting here today. I challenge you. I challenge all of you. No matter how busy you are, no matter what jobs you have. In the morning when you get up, open the Quran, read one verse, put a mark there and close it again and carry on. What did you start your day with? The words of Allah. Is it impossible? It's not even difficult. Many of us start the day with a mobile phone. No problem. Go to the right app. What's the app? Open the Quran in your phone. Put a mark. At least one thing. People's phones take them to Jahannam. At least ours would take us to Jannah. Allah grant us goodness. It's not difficult. It's a challenge. And why I say it's a challenge. I've known of so many people who came back to me and told me, Sheikh, you know what? We started it and now I read about five pages in the morning. They started with one, one verse. The Quran is the word of Allah. Allah Almighty says, whoever walks to me, I will rush to them. Man atani yamshi ataituhu harwala. Hadith Qudsi, you make an effort with the word of Allah. Allah will make sure that he magnetizes you beyond your imagination with the same word. But you didn't make the first effort. Forget about the connection with the Quran. Make an effort. One verse. It won't take you one minute for Allah. We're ready to do it for everything else. So we say our Shahada. That's a pillar of Islam. We are fasting because of Ramadan. I'm talking of when it is in Ramadan. It is a Friday and on top of that, we are fulfilling Salatul Jum'ah, which is part of Salah, which is also a pillar of Islam. And guess what? Then Allah says, hang on. I want to give you something even more. I want to add greater value to the last 10 nights of Ramadan. I'm in the last 10 nights. I'm in Ramadan. It is a Friday. And on top of that, I am fortunate enough to be fasting. And now I'm giving zakat as well because my day is up. Look at the pillars of Islam, all four of them in one day. Will you not ask Allah to forgive you, to give you Jannah, to help you, to improve you? Will you not make promises to Allah? He's given you a gift. Guess what? He has already given you this gift every year that passed. But sometimes we don't think of it. We are not reminded about it. So what happens? We become oblivious. Start planning from now. If you had a fair, business fair, where they were selling or displaying products connected to your line of business, you would travel all the way to China to attend the fair. Why? Because you know, I'm going to find some products going to be beneficial. We'll do business. We'll load a container. Maybe we'll send it. Subhanallah. We'll clear it. We'll sell it. You've worked out your profits before you even went to the fair and you know how many pounds you're going to make and everything. I promise you Ramadan is way beyond that man. My brothers, my sisters, Ramadan is amazing. Ramadan is such a blessed month that Wallahi thumma Wallahi. As soon as the moon is sighted, the Ronaq and the spirituality is immediately felt. Instantly felt. You see the moon. People say, MashaAllah, we Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil yumni wal imani. The dua, oh Allah, grant us the barakah and the blessings you've kept in this beautiful month. Let the moon, the crescent be sighted with iman, with faith, conviction, with surrendering to you. As soon as you sight the moon of Ramadan, Wallahi, I promise you, the whole ambience has been instantly changed by Allah within one second. You come to the masjid already, your taraweeh, full swing, first night, full swing, first night. May Allah Almighty grant us barakah. What a gift of Allah. What a gift. He keeps the goodness in something and he makes you feel it. On top of that, he gives you the last 10 nights. Powerful, like I said. And like that was not enough. He says, I'm going to keep 
an even greater power in the night known as the night of decree taharraw laylat al-qadr fi al-witr min al-'ashr al-awakhir min ramadana he says search for the night of decree in the odd nights from among the last 10 nights of ramadan most likely towards the latter ones perhaps 25 27 29 27 29 more likely but not necessarily the ones what's the idea the idea is to help you to worship allah better if allah told you your date and time of death you know people would be sinning until two days before death and then say astaghfirullah alazim la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah oh allah forgive us allah says we kept your death hidden so that you can worship us correctly simple imagine if you knew your date of death brother you're dying in 2050 on the 5th of rabi' al awwal for example at 2:30 in the morning oh wow 2050 guys i know what i'll do astaghfirullah sahaba radiyallahu anhum were told you are from jannah you are from jannah you are from jannah you are from jannah there is a group known as al ashara al mubashirin bil jannah 10 people who were given glad tidings of jannah just as well we were not given such because if we were given in our generation that people would say i'm going to jannah anyway let me start having a little bit of a jannah here quickly but the sahaba radiyallahu anhum did the opposite i'm going to jannah anyway let me do so much of good to be thankful to allah almighty and to earn an even higher status nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to spend the nights in worship until his feet were swollen his blessed wife the mother of the believers aisha radiyallahu anha she says oh messenger allah has elevated your status you are perfect you have so much of goodness and how is it that you're still standing in prayer until your feet are swollen he says ya aisha oh my beloved wife aisha afala akuna abdan shakura should i not be thankful to allah for what he gave me in status i'm going to do more of this allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allah has given us a little value it get up not every day, at least in Ramadan. The last 10 nights have in them Laylatul Qadr. Look, look for it, search for it. Imagine if you find it. And imagine if one of those days happened to be the Friday. Laylatul Jumu'ah. And then you have the Friday. What blessing. But I want to tell you, you will only be able to figure the blessings if you yourself are concerned about turning to Allah. Those who are not bothered about turning to Allah, they won't even feel the blessing of a Friday. On a Friday, let it be a different day. Get up. Have a bath, put a little bit of perfume, dress in a beautiful way, give it importance. You must be conscious of the masjid, be conscious of the Jum'ah. Try and get there early, have a special type of a feeling for that Friday because of your connection with Allah. A beautiful verse of the Quran, Allah Almighty says to us, those who strive and make an effort to come towards us, those are the ones we will guide towards our paths. Did you make an effort? Yes, you did. Are you making an effort? Yes. Allah will open your doors. Allah will give you the feeling. Ramadan is a beautiful month. We are not supposed to be swearing anyway throughout the year. But in Ramadan, you are more conscious of it. You're supposed to be. Now you have, I think the fasts here are becoming shorter now. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Now, towards the last portion of the fast, people are hungry. The belly rumbles. You hear the sound in the stomach. Right? A lot of the times when that happens, people start losing their cool. They get irked for small things. Someone looked at you. What you're looking at? Relax. It's only Ramadan. It's your belly making you say things. Calm down. You need to be careful because your reward for the fast towards the end of the fast, you don't want to spoil it. And you know, moments ago, I said, if Allah kept your death known, prescribed to you, there would be no joy. There would be no joy in worship because you know, as it is, I'm going to die after so long or I'm going to die. Before you die, you say, Astaghfirullah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm gone. It's not as easy as that. No way. In the same way, Allah did not give us the information of Laylatul Qadr. The hadith says, the information was initially given and immediately taken away. Why? According to one of the narrations, because of the arguments of the people of the Ummah, some two people were arguing about something and that was not loved by Allah. Anyway, that's a lesson on its own. But the primary information is we don't know the exact date of Laylatul Qadr just as well. Imagine if you knew it, people would not come to the masjid throughout Ramadan. One night they will come and they will carry on. They are still doing it. 27th night, everyone comes after that, they're gone. Subhanallah. You see the graph and I'm going to end on this note.
The graph of attendance in the house of Allah in Ramadan is as follows. First day is packed. Second day is semi-packed. Third day is not so bad. Fourth day, it starts coming down. Less people. One week passes, there's hardly many in the masjid. This is a fact. I'm telling you so that we can change it. That's why I'm telling you. Then people say, no, I go to work, I go to this, I go to that. My brother, if there was a football match, you can go to work 10 times. You're still going to stand in front of that TV and cheer your team like you don't even have a fast. Uh, especially when there's World Cup. Ramadan is more important. And then what happens? You find 15th of Ramadan, after that it starts picking up a little bit. 20th, it picks up a bit more. 20, 23, it's, yes, it's starting to get there. 24, not much. 25, a little bit more. 26, not that much. 27, packed out. Totally packed. 27, if your masjid finished the Quran on 27, forget about the rest of the days. We tell the Imams nowadays, finish on the 29th. At least people will actually, what? They'll keep on coming to the masjid. You finish 27, everything is gone. People are gone. They're like holiday. You see the guy sleeping at home. What's happening? But Quran is finished. Quran is finished. Ramadan is not. Go. They are still doing taraweeh. They are reading other ayat. They might have started again. So don't lose. This is Ramadan. We're talking about preparation for the month. I've presented to you the value of Ramadan, the value of a Friday, the value of that Friday in Ramadan, the value of the Friday in Ramadan, in the last 10 nights. My brothers, my sisters, we are gifted by Allah. Use it, appreciate it, understand it, feel it, change your lives for the sake of Allah because life is very, very, very short. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and mercy.